In maths, if we have a list of numbers that follows a particular rule or pattern, then we can call it a sequence. The numbers within the sequence are known as terms. So this number 1 here is the first term of the sequence. This number 7 here is the third term of this sequence. And this 13 here is the fifth term of the sequence. In this sequence, to get from the first term to the second term, we can add 3. This is also the same to get from the second term to the third term. In fact, it's the same to get from any term to the next term. Since this is how we get from one term to the next, we call it the term to term rule. So the term to term rule for this sequence is just add 3. Let's have a look at how we can use this in questions. So for this question, we're told the term to term rule of a sequence is add 10. The first term of the sequence is 4, and we need to work out the third term of the sequence. So we're told the first term is 4, so we can write down 4 as the start of this sequence. But we need to work out the third term, so we need to work out two more terms, but we're told the term to term rule is add 10. So to get from the first term, which is 4, to the second term, we just need to add 10. And 4 add 10 is 14. So we found the second term is 14. Then to get the third term, we add 10 again. And 14 add 10 is 24. So the answer to this question is the third term is 24. Let's try a second example. So in this one, the term to term rule is slightly different, it's subtract 5. We're told the first term of the sequence is 11, and we need to work out the fourth term this time. So we're told the first term again, this time it's 11, so let's write that down as the start of the sequence. And we're asked to work out the fourth term this time, so we need to work out three more terms, using the term to term rule, subtract 5. So to get from 11 to the second term, we need to subtract 5. 11 subtract 5 is 6. Then to get from the second term to the third term, we subtract 5 again. 6 subtract 5 is 1. Now we're looking for the fourth term, so we need to go one more time. So 1 subtract 5, which is negative 4. So the answer to this question, the fourth term, is negative 4. Sometimes we have a term to term rule that comes in more than one part. For example, in this one, the term to term rule is add 1 and then multiply by 2. We're told the first term is 3, and we need to work out the third term. So we just need to be careful this time and remember that the term to term rule is in two parts, add 1, then multiply by 2. The first term of the sequence is 3, so let's write that down. And we're looking for the third term, so we need to do the term to term rule two more times. So it's in two parts, remember. So we're going to start with the first term, 3. But then to do the term to term rule, we add 1, which will give you 4. And then we multiply this by 2, and 4 multiplied by 2 is 8. So the second term of the sequence will be 8. Then to work out the third term, we do the term to term rule again. So we need to add 1, then multiply by 2. So let's start with 8, add 1 to it, which gives you 9. And then multiply this by 2. So 9 multiplied by 2 is 18. So the third term is 18, which means the answer to the question was 18. Let's try another example like this one. So this time the term to term rule of the sequence is divide by 5 then add 10. We're told the first term is 200, and we need to work out the third term again. So notice again this one has two parts to its term to term rule. We're going to divide by 5 and then add 10. We're told the first term is 200, so let's write that down, and we'll need to work out the third term. So we'll do the rule two more times. So let's start with 200, and then we need to divide it by 5 according to the term to term rule. 200 divided by 5 is 40. And then the term to term rule says add 10. So 40 add 10 is 50. So the second term is 50. Then we take this term and we apply the term to term rule once more. So 50 divided by 5 is 10. And then it says to add 10, so we add 10 to 10, so 10 add 10 is 20. So we get 20 for the third term, which means the answer must be 20. Now let's have a look at a more difficult question. In this question, the term to term rule of a sequence is subtract 7. The fourth term of the sequence is 25, and we need to work out the first term. So unlike all of the previous questions, we've not been told the first term. In fact, we're going to work out the first term. In this one, we're told the fourth term is 25. So I'm going to draw a line for the first term, one for the second term, and the third term, but we know the fourth term, that's 25. 
we've been asked to work out the first term of the sequence, and we have the term to term rule which is subtract 7. This means if I wanted to go from the first term to the second term, I would subtract 7, and the same for the second to the third, and the third to the fourth. But I'm going to need to work backwards to work out the first term in this sequence, so instead we're going to go in this direction. If we ever go in the opposite direction, we need to use the inverse operation. So instead of subtracting 7, we're going to add 7 since we're going the opposite way. So we'll start at 25 and add 7, which gives you 32. 32 add 7 is 39, and 39 add 7 is 46. So we've now found the first term of the sequence. The answer is 46. In this question, the term to term rule is multiply by 3, then subtract 2. The third term is 28, and we need to work out the first term. So in this one again, we've been told the third term is 28, so we're going to need to work backwards to work out the first term. We'll draw a line for the first term, a line for the second term, and we know the third term, that's 28. We're working out the first term, and the term to term rule is multiply by 3, then subtract 2. Now I'm going to space these terms out a little more this time, because we have two parts to the term to term rule. So if we were doing this in the usual direction, we'd start with the first term, multiply by 3, and then subtract 2, and that would get us the second term. Then from the second term, we'd multiply by 3, and then subtract 2, and that would get us the third term. But once again, we're going in the opposite direction since we want to know the first term. So let's change the direction of these arrows, but also the operations. So both of those subtract 2s must become plus 2s, and both of the multiply 3s must become divide by 3s. Now we just work backwards to find the first term. If we start with 28, then plus 2, we get 30. Now I've put 30 in grey here because it's not actually a term of the sequence. We haven't finished applying the term to term rule in reverse yet. Then from 30, we divide by 3, which gives you 10. So the second term was 10. Then from 10, we add 2, which is 12. Again, 12 isn't actually a term of this sequence, which is why I've put it in grey. And then we do 12 divided by 3, which is 4. So the first term of the sequence must have been 4. So the answer is 4. Now let's have a look at one more question. For this one, the term to term rule of the sequence is to add k. We're told the first term, which is 9, and also the fifth term, which is 53. And we've been asked to work out the value of k. So this time, the term to term rule uses algebra rather than a number here. It says to add k. We're told the first term is 9. So we can write that down at the start of our sequence. And we're told the fifth term is 53. So if we do a line for the second term, the third term, the fourth term, we can write the fifth term as 53. So to get from one term to the next in this sequence, we add k. So to get from 9 to the second term, we add k. From the second to the third term, we add k. And the same from the third to the fourth, and the fourth to the fifth. Notice how to get from 9 to 53, we need to add k four times. To solve a question like this, I like to imagine how we get from 9 to 53 in one big jump. To do this, I can do 53 subtract 9, which will give you 44. So to get from 9 to 53 in one big jump, I add 44. But we're not going to do it in one big jump, we're going to do it in four smaller jumps of k. So what we can do is divide that big jump of 44 into four smaller jumps. So if we divide 44 by 4, we get 11. This means if we were to do it in four smaller jumps, each one would be 11. So we can replace all of those k's with 11. You may want to double check this to check you've done it right. If you do 9 add 11, you get 20. 20 add 11, you get 31. 31 add 11, you get 42. And 42 add 11 does give you 53. So each of those jumps was add 11, so k must have been 11. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not go and try the exam questions in this video's description.